Holy sh! Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing great, as you will find out uh, through the course of this video. Uh, yes, you know I'm excited uh, to show you what I've got in a haul when I do it the very same day I come home less than three hours after I've come home. Yes, the stuff had, hadn't, hasn't had a chance to collect dust yet. Anyway, let me give you the uh, backstory here. A local radio station, uh, KRVM, here in the Eugene area, uh, apparently they do sometimes once a year, sometimes twice a year, a media sale. Uh, all of the CDs, records, they had a few DVDs, but you know, it's 98% records and CDs split almost down the middle. Just a few more records than there are CDs. Uh, and, but this is the first time that I've uh, attended the sale. The first time I've known about it in advance. Uh, yeah, I've been living here for close to 30 years, and I haven't been to the KRVM media sale until this year. And that's the only way I, the only reason I knew about it was my good friend Katya told me about it uh, less than a week ago. And so I almost didn't go just because I had a rough day at work yesterday and I didn't really want to go into town and be surrounded by people. You know, people suck sometimes, you know? Not a lot of people, just just enough to make you think that people suck. Anyway, uh, yes, long day at work yesterday, so I almost didn't want to leave the house today, but I am so glad I second-guessed myself, so glad I convinced myself to go in, because that media sale was leaps and bounds beyond what I ever thought it was going to be. Uh, I took a bag with me, and, you know, thinking that Murphy's Law, the larger the bag you take, the less stuff you're going to find. So I took a nice big bag, thinking I was going to find maybe half a dozen CDs. <laughs> I've never I've never been happier to be wrong. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yes, uh, you bu if you bought up to, I think it was 20 items, they were 50 cents each. If you bought more than 20, 25 cents each. So yes. I bought over four dozen CDs, and I'm going to show almost all of them to you. There are a few that I'm hiding, I'm thinking of giving as gifts to uh, at least one person who is probably watching this video. And yes, to, to that person in particular, you didn't think I was going to go to the sale and not buy you something. Really? I mean, it's me you're talking to. Anyway, uh, so yes, I'm going to start out. I kind of have these categorized, as I like to do with my haul videos, show you, you know, a certain genre kind of flowing into another genre or, or topic in this case. Uh, but yes, the first four, yeah, the first four that I have here, I've already got these, but first of all, since they were 25 cents each, um, I got them thinking, you know, maybe I'll give them to friends, maybe not. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. But uh, one of my favorite artists is Teddy Thompson. And these are his two, what I consider his two best albums, um, Separate Ways and A Piece of What You Need. I, I, my, my brain is swimming with CDs, so I'm sometimes I tend to forget the titles of some of my favorite albums. So. And then the, these other two, this one is really interesting. They're called Ola Bell, and this was kind of a mixture of very old time, you know, very old folk songs. I mean, we're talking, you know, 18th, 19th century folk songs, a little bit of gospel in there also, and some country Americana ish stuff. A very unique group. And I've already got this CD, but I don't know, maybe somebody else I know might like it. And then uh, a favorite Angelique Kijo album of hers, of, of mine, Jin Jin is the name of it. And this one actually has guest appearances by Alicia Keys, Branford Marsalis, Joss Stone, Peter Gabriel, Carlos Santana, Josh Groban, Ziggy Marley. And it, it, it is her all-star album, basically. So I strongly suggest, if you like... African music, but that's kind of a little bit westernized, which is, you know, if you're not used to world music, having it kind of westernized is a good backdoor into seeing if you like the genre. Check out Jin Jin. Anyway, those are a couple of uh, the starters here. And I'm going to start with kind of the uh, easy listening and jazz and classical stuff. I kind of have these in reverse order. Anyway, the first thing I'll show you is actually a five CD set from the Laser Light label, um, Rock Dreams. It is uh, orchestral renditions of pop and rock songs by the Royal Philharmonic or Orchestra of London, a great orchestra. And four out of the five discs, as you can kind of maybe see, are still sealed. 
And this is very reminiscent of, this brings back memories of my trip to Tulsa a couple of years ago. There was a set of uh, five CDs, I think on the laser light label also, of the complete works of Scott Joplin that I picked up at one of the stores in Oklahoma City. And all but one of the CDs were still sealed. So kind of variations on a theme. No pun intended. So yeah, I thought, you know, when, when things were getting down to 25 cents a piece, I thought, you know, it's like, why not pick this stuff up? And still, I was kind of hemming and hawing over some stuff, you know, and when I should have just, you know, screw the hemming and hawing. They're 25 cents a piece, Tom. Come on. But one reason I was hemming and hawing was because I just got done with a pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, purge of my CD collection. Before this purge, I had right around 3,000 CDs. I got rid of a good 150 plus CDs in that purge. So kind of anxious not to pack up my shelves again so quickly. But then I've kind of, I've backpedaled by about a third of that purge with <laughs> stuff here. So anyway, uh, a little bit of a gospel here. There's a, oh, there's a little uh, post-it note on there. Not even post-it, anyway. And yes, a lot of these CDs need to be recased. As, as you will see, some of these are complete, uh, almost completely shattered. Anyway, uh, Mahalia Jackson, uh, the world's greatest gospel singer. This is her her landmark album, or her, her the, the album she's famous for. She did back in the 60s? The 50s? I can't remember. But uh, I am not much into gospel, but Mahalia Jackson is supposed to be the best at it. So uh, I have a compilation of hers, but I was kind of anxious to get the album that kind of launched her into notoriety, or stardom. And then I found, this one's still sealed, a Billie Holiday songbook. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying to uh, avoid it with the uh, direct in the CDs. But yes, um, it's from the Steinway label, uh, piano uh, maker. Uh, Laura Downs on solo piano covers some songs that Billie Holiday made famous as vocal renditions. So figure what the heck. And, you know, you know, like I said, a lot of these things, 25 cents a pop, why not give them a try? Uh, and then we have, well, this one, I, I kind of know what to expect from these guys, but it, it's a Christmas album that I did not have. The, Manha the Manhattan Transfer Christmas album. Uh, they're a very good uh, vocal jazz group, so I figured they've got to be good at Christmas songs as well. Then we have, um, this is put out on a jazz label, GRP Records. Uh, I'm not sure if it's jazz or if it might be of R&B, but they call themselves The Meeting. It is. Uh, Ndugu Chancellor, I think is how you pronounce his name, Alfonso Johnson, Patrice Russian, who is a uh, popular 80s vocalist, and Ernie Watts. So it is a... Uh, I I'm guessing it's R&B combined with jazz, kind of a, a mix of both. So, yeah. I mean, I I'm going to repeat myself, but it's like, hey... Why not try this stuff out? It looked and sounded intriguing. Speaking of looking and sounding intriguing, Leila Josefowitz, or Josefowitz, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This is an album called Americana. She is a classical violinist, apparently. And she uh, jo is joined by John Novacek, or Novacek on piano. And it is basically just renditions of pieces by American composers. Uh, Gershwin... Um, Joplin, oh, and there's there's probably got to be um, uh, Aaron Copeland in here, probably also somewhere. But uh, yeah, I figured it was kind of be kind of interesting. That's about as close as close to patriotic music as I get, really. Uh, then we have a couple of jazz artists that I am familiar with. Uh, David Sanborn, his album "Time Again" uh, looks pretty good. I've got a few David Sanborn albums. And then uh, Dave Grusin, he was actually one of the guy, one of the guys who founded the GRP label. Uh, Grusin Rosen Productions, Dave Grusin and Larry Rosen. That's what GRP stands for. Grusin Rosen Productions. Trivia note. Uh, so yes, this is his album Night Nightlines. And then I've got one album. At least I'm pretty sure I still have it. I don't think I would have gotten rid of it by a uh, jazz trumpeter who appeared on, of all things, um, I believe it was uh, Megan Trainer's latest album. His name is Arturo Sandoval, and I believe this is his second album, uh, and it's called Dream Come True. And uh, so, yeah, very looking forward to listening to this one. Uh, and then a, a local artist, uh, or a, he was born and raised in Oregon, uh, Chris Boti. He is a 
uh, jazz trumpeter. And this is his, his first album on the Columbia label, Night Moves. So I figured I'd pick that one up. I've actually got, oh, five or six uh, Chris Boti albums so far. So I figured I'd get the opportunity, especially at 25 cents a piece, to add to the collection. And then there's a uh, jazz guitarist that I've thought about checking out for a while, uh, just never had the chance to. His name is Peter White, and this is his album Caravan of Dreams. And yeah, I found actually two of them, uh, and this one really kind of caught my interest. Uh, Play in Favorites. This is an album of cover songs of songs that he enjoys. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he does Bill Withers' Lovely Day. Uh, Deja Vu, which I assume is the song that Dionne Warwick made famous in the 80s. Uh, what Does It Take to Win Your Love? I'm not sure if that was... Uh, um, a cover or an original. Uh, the Look of Love, the, the Back Rack song. Uh, Hit the Road Jack, the Ray Charles song. Uh, Mr. Magic, which was a Grover Washington Jr. song. So, yeah, looking forward to listening to that one. And then uh, let me take a drink real quick first. Excuse me. <clears throat> one thing that I did not expect, well, I didn't expect to find anywhere near this much, as I think I mentioned at the beginning of this video. But one thing I did not expect to find much of anything, much of any at all of, in that sale was soundtracks. And although I think, before I get into this, just a little interlude here, uh, when Skip closed his store, Skip's Records and CD World, uh, and there's a reason I'm mentioning this, mentioning this as you'll see in a second here, uh, he told me that everything that he didn't sell by the time he closed the store, he had donated to, I think he said, to the local libraries and maybe to some of the local radio stations. So I think that's a re that's why some of these things are showing up here. Uh, I ran into several CDs that have the old price sticker from Skips on it. So uh, very cool. And yes, uh, as I said, we're getting into soundtracks. I've been on a John Williams soundtrack kick lately, and of all the things I expected not to find there, a few John Williams soundtracks that I did not have. And I'm, uh, I've actually passed, with what I bought here, I've passed 60 John Williams soundtracks. Yes. This is a subject that will come up uh, sometime soon on my channel, and I'm not going to say anything more about that. Angela's Ashes. Uh, I have not seen this movie, so I don't know what it's about. Uh, I was not particularly seeking out these soundtracks in, uh, specifically, but when, when I find a John Williams soundtrack, I'm going to buy it. A John Williams soundtrack that I don't have. And then uh, a movie called Stepmom with... Um, Julia Roberts, Susan Sarandon, and Ed Harris, another movie I have not seen yet. And then I already have a reissue of this. It was on some uh, independent label, but they had the original Warner Brothers issue of this, and I decided to pick it up, uh, The Witches of Eastwick. This was a Jack Nicholson movie from the late 80s, 87. So, yeah. And a, an album, a song called... Or, now, a song, soundtrack from a movie called Rosewood, and it has to do with um, racial tensions in the early 20th century, maybe late 19th century. It doesn't have to do with the uh, um, Tulsa massacre, but something similar. Uh, and I, But I have not seen the movie yet. I, I need to see this movie. So, uh, yeah, this is another, another John Williams. So, yeah, four John Williams soundtracks. Oh, actually, if you count this one, five. This is a promo CD of The Lost World, the Jurassic Park sequel. So, and it has one selection from the soundtrack and then a whole bunch of sound effects. So I thought that was pretty cool. They have a, a little sound effect library. Uh, and then one more soundtrack. This is a song-based soundtrack that I was very happy to find. It's from a movie called Tin Cup. I have not seen the movie, but I saw the CD in House of Records dollar section just a couple weeks ago. Um, it was kind of scratched up, but I picked it up anyway because it has... Keb Mo, I'm a huge Keb Mo fan, Bruce Hornsby, Mary Chapin Carpenter, Chris Isaac, who I'm also a pretty good fan of, Amanda Marshall, Sean Colvin. So I was very, uh, very happy to see a nice uh, scratch-free copy of this there. They actually had more than one. So I uh, was yes, very happy to pick that up. And then, oh, a couple things out of order here. Two more soundtracks. Well, actually... <laughs> Okay, I've got things a little bit out of order here, so I'm going to have something in between between the soundtracks. Anyway, a couple of classic Disney soundtracks. Uh, not particularly a huge fan of Disney, but they were there. They were in really good condition, so I picked them up. Got Dumbo. And 
Ah, come on. Bambi. Why the heck not? For Again, for 25 cents. Come on. And then... Uh, wiggle these around, make a little room. Sorry. This one looked really interesting to me. Um, it's a two-disc set. Julie Andrews and Carol Burnett, the CBS television specials. So, uh, yes... I'm a big fan of Carol Burnett. She had a sketch comedy and variety show back on back in the 70s that I watched when I was a kid in reruns. I'm not that old. I watched them in the 80s. Behave yourself. Uh, well, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, Julie Andrews, of course, has a gorgeous voice. So, I mean, it's like as soon as I saw this, I decided to pick it up. And, yeah, two discs set. Disc one is Julie and Carol at Carnegie Hall. And disc two is Julie and Carol at Lincoln Center. So, Yeah. It, it was on the uh, Sony Masterworks label, so what the heck? Now, this next block of CDs, uh, ending with the soundtracks and going into something else, um, I've thought about doing something, and I'm probably going to start doing it uh, beginning of, of 2024, uh, label spotlight videos. Uh, do a video every now and then that spotlights a particular record label that I like and appreciate and have found good stuff on. Um, and these next, uh, I've got two labels represented here that I'm going to talk about a little bit here. The Varez Sarabond label. Strange name, but uh, they, they are primarily a soundtrack reissue label, and I found a few things of theirs. Um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, the, the classic soundtrack that's always, always fun and entertaining. Uh, oh, and these next two are not soundtracks, so we're moving into just regular song stuff. Um, but yeah, a couple of other Varez lab uh, label CDs. They don't do a lot of non-soundtrack stuff, but I found a couple of non-soundtrack things. Uh, John Phillips of the Mamas and the Papas. Uh, this is his album, John the Wolf King of L.A., the Varez Sarabond reissue. So I figured I'd pick that up as much as I enjoy um, the Mamas and the Papas. And we have Billy Ward and his Dominoes. Oh, yes. Um, the Best of the 50s Masters, 1957 to 59. So I figured this would probably be very, very entertaining to listen to. I'm not very I'm not very familiar with um, uh, Billy Ward and the Dominoes. My brain, I'm telling you. But yes, um, as you can see down here, Varez Sarabond is the name of that record label. So, and another label that I will probably be doing a label spotlight video on is Rounder Records. Uh, there are a few artists that I've uh, enjoyed for several years now that are that happen to be on Rounder, and so I've kind of been on a little thing lately where I've been picking up rounder CDs that look interesting that I thought I'd just go ahead and try at random. And the uh, first one here is the classic Aaron Neville. I have an Aaron Neville collection, and I don't know how much of uh, overlap is there is between that one. I think that one was on Atlantic or Warner or, you know, one of the labels he was on, and this one here on Rounder. So I figured I'd pick it up, give it a shot. I mean, honestly, you know, Aaron Neville, you really can't go wrong with him. Then we have the Dayton family. Never heard of them, but um, they are uh, the Dayton family are Barnsley's finest South Moluccan string band. I have no idea what that is, and that intrigued me all the more. So I am going to be very interested to listen to this. Yes, um, South Yorkshire slash Indonesian slash Dutch Cajun folk pop. And as those of you who've known me for a while, you know anything that crosses or mashes up genres, genre lines, I, I have to at least check it out. So I'm going to be very curious to listen to this one. And uh, here we have oh, a couple more with uh, Skip's receipt uh, or barcode labels on them. Uh, this one, David Torkinowski, Stepping Out is the name of the album. I have no idea who this guy is. Uh, there's a picture of a piano. On, on the back, well, and on the front here, so presumably he is he plays piano, you would think. And then uh, Lynn Miles with her album Slightly Haunted. Again, most of these Rounder Records CDs, I have no idea what to expect from, from them. And then Where It's At by the Holmes Brothers. Like I said, for 25 cents, gotta pick them up. And then we have, this is a compilation. Uh, old Time Music, On the Air, Volume 1. Uh, yeah, I mean, they have write-ups on the back of them that uh, 
kind of tell you a little bit of what to expect from them, but okay. I am always willing to uh, to give some new interesting stuff a try, or new stuff a try that I think is interesting. It might not be, but that's half the adventure of checking this stuff out. Now we're getting into the the more uh, current contemporary pop rock and etc. stuff. This is one that I was very surprised to find there and in very good condition. I've always wanted to give Childish Gambino a serious try, and they had uh, Awaken My Love is the name of this album. So give it a try. And as I keep saying, for 25 cents, why not? And these next couple of artists I am not familiar with, so I it'll be interesting to see what they're all about. Coasts. I love the cover of this album. I mean, it with the palm trees, it obviously is trying to evoke a California vibe, so I'm kind of expecting Cal West Coast pop rock California stuff. Maybe. Who knows? And then this one. I'm not totally sure that I didn't try these guys out before. And in fact, I might very possibly have sold this CD to Skips ages ago, and because uh, it's another one that came from Skips. Uh, Gold Room, West of the West. Again, I have no idea. This one, I think I had tried her out a while ago, was not uh, particularly taken with her back then, but that was before I really started getting back into or getting into female artists. Lucy Woodward with her, uh, I think this was her debut album or her debut major label album, Hooked. As you can kind of, as can, you can kind of tell from the cover, it has, as I recall from listening to it the first time, it has a, a bit of a throwback 40s uh, vibe to it. So I'll have to confirm that. Now this next one, uh, and one of the cool things about the sale was you're, you're right up next to people. I mean, the CD section was surprisingly crowded. And of course, as you might venture to guess, crowded with people who were around my age and a little bit older. Uh, and we were kind of, you know, we were excusing each other, you know, going past each other or, you know, switching places so that we could go through the CDs. And, you know, it was a very friendly, very neighborly atmosphere, which I really appreciated. Uh, and this one guy just kind of uh, uh, put the CD in front of me and said, for 25 cents, you can't go wrong with this. So I'll be interested to see this. And, sir, if you happen to be watching this channel, you probably aren't, but what the heck. Uh, Patty Loveless with Mountain Soul. I have I do not recall that I have any experience with Patty Loveless up to now, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if he was, uh, you know, if, if his uh, protestations or whatever you call it about the CD were right. So, and obviously, since I just bought these, I have not listened to any of them yet. And this one, I was absolutely stoked to find this one because I'm a fan of hers, and this is a CD I did not have. Rumor, this is her B-Sides and Rarities album. So, even if this was all that I found at the sale, I would have been happy. So... And now this one, I bought mainly for the title track, because uh, I really enjoyed it, but I have not been able to get much into the rest of their stuff. But then this was probably a good 10 or 12 years ago, so I'm going to give this CD another try. Maybe I will enjoy it more. Gomez, with their album How We Operate. Again, the title track is outstanding. So uh, if nothing more, I will enjoy one song off of it. Then these guys, I have no idea who they are. Um, Tommy Conwell and the Young Ramblers with Guitar Trouble. And I don't know if they're country or rock. Uh, the, the word Ramblers kind of makes it sound like they're country, but who knows. Uh, but then there's a song in here called Don't Want to Sing the Blues and Rock With You. So it could be rock, it could be blues. Who knows what it is. And then another artist that I found two CDs by, I was kind of excited about, Dan Wilson. And if the name is not familiar with you, uh, familiar to you, the group Semisonic, they had one big hit back in the late 90s with Closing Time. Dan, Mils Dan Wilson is the front man and songwriter for Semisonic. Uh, this one I had to pick up because of the hype sticker. Guest performers, Sarah Bareilles, Missy Higgins, uh, Natalie Maines, Blake Mills, uh, Sarah Watkins, and Sean Watkins. So have to listen to this one. Um, Love Without Fear is the name of this album. <clears throat> and this one, I guess, is 
Uh, he does reworkings of his own songs and semi-sonic songs. It's called Recovered. So there you go. And yes, he does actually he does a cover of Closing Time. Well, a cover. If an artist can do a cover of his own song, can he? I don't know. Anyway. And then we have uh, The Essential Mary Chapin Carpenter. I listened to a couple of her albums recently. Thought they were okay, so I thought I'd go ahead and... Uh, Again, for 25 cents, uh, pick up a Greatest Hits of hers. So there you go. And then we have Kylie Minogue, her debut album, Kylie. I think it was her debut album. It's one that's got the locomotion on it. And is there another one on? Another hit on here? I Maybe not. But yeah. I'm not a huge fan of Kylie. What I've listened to of her, I've listened to a couple of her albums before. Just She just did, hasn't stuck with me yet. Maybe this will uh, turn the tables. Here's one that I had actually kind of had my eye out for. It's got a couple little scratches on it. I need to see if I can clean, uh, you know, first of all, I need to recase all these CDs, most of them anyway, and I need to uh, see if I can clean any of them that still have smudges and stuff on them. Spin Doctors. As I recall, Pocket Full of Kryptonite was in uh, a recent uh, bargain bag of mine, and I really enjoyed it, so I've been looking out for their subsequent... The, the one right after, the one right before, I can't remember. But uh, this was this was it. Uh, Turn it upside down. So I was happy to find that one. And here we have another. Don't know. I can't remember if this was their debut album or not. But ah, what is it? Night Ranger, Midnight Madness, Midnight Madness. Uh, it's got you can still rock in America and Sister Christian. Uh, so happy to pick that one up. Not a huge fan, and I wasn't back in the day, but. It's it's an 80s thing, so I'm definitely going to check it out. And this one, I've owned this before, but it never really clicked with me. Maybe it will this time. Grace by Jeff Buckley. Yes. I, I found some good stuff there, I'm telling you. And uh, the final two CDs I'm going to show you are two volumes in the Now series. I decided to go ahead and uh, pick up a couple of them. Not a huge fan of the Now series, uh, you know, just they're just kind of, it's the stuff you hear on the radio all the time, you know. But uh, these looked interesting. Uh, now that's what I call dance classics. And it's got uh, Gonna Make You Sweat by CNC Music Factories, Factory, uh, Bust of Move by Young MC, uh, You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer, Boogie Wonderland by Earth, Wind, and Fire, <coughs> You Dropped a Bomb on Me by The Gap Band. Should be fun to listen to. And then uh, this one. Now that's what I call the modern songbook. Now that's what I call very generalized titles so that you can just pack whatever you want to into a CD. Anyway, uh, I guess Susan Boyle, Josh Groban, Michael Buble, Train, Colby Calais, Lady Antebellum, Maroon 5, The Fray, Sarah Bareilles. So, kind of just you know, a catch-all. This could have easily been a Now That's What I Call Music Volume 25. Sort of thing, you know. Anyway, so I think I came out of that uh, sale with a lot of great stuff. I'm going to have fun, despite the fact that I've kind of backpedaled quite a bit on my, uh, my uh, both, both my CD purge, you know, freeing up shelf space on my CD purge, and my listening, my CD listening backlog, which is still, still up there. Yeah, anyway, hey, it's a constant struggle for us uh, music fans and CD buyers, wouldn't you say? Anyway, so that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.